Hello Trailblazers, and welcome back to part 2 of Configuring Product Rules. If you haven't already seen part 1, I do recommend going over that video first, as today's video will be expanding on the basics that have already been covered on there. With that being said, in today's tutorial, we'll be going over the two other product rule types that we didn't cover last time, Alert and Filter. Alert is similar to the validation type that we covered last time, except unlike validation, it doesn't impede you from saving changes made to the quote. If your quote meets the error condition, you'll still get the warning message before saving, similar to the validation, but you'll have the option instead to save the quote or go back and make any adjustments you'd like. It's sort of like a reminder or suggestion message. Filter, on the other hand, is a bit more complicated, and what this product rule type does is that it automatically filters products within a bundle based on a predetermined field as set by your organization's administrator. This might sound confusing, but we'll go over it in detail here so you can get a better understanding. Up first is the alert product rule, and this will follow the same steps from validation rule from before. Let's go over to the product rules first. Let's hit new here. Let's give it a name. Same as before, we can do no more than 5 kilowatt batteries. This time, type is going to be alert. Scope is still going to be quote. Evaluation event will be always. Active to true. Conditions met, let's say all. Advanced condition is not needed this time since our condition met is going to be all. And then as for error message, we're going to add a similar message as before. Cannot add more than 5, 10 kilowatt batteries on this quote. The lookup query information, just as before, we can leave blank. Save. Now from here, we need to create an error condition so that our product rule triggers. But before we can configure the error condition, we need to make sure that the fields we're going to be checking, in this case product name and quantity, are available for selection on the error condition object as a tested field. In this case, we do have it. And if you want to find out how to configure this field, please refer to part one of this series. With that being said, we can continue setting up our error condition. Select new. From here, index is important for this demo since our condition is all, but we can put one. For tested object, we can select quote line. For tested field, we can select Product code. For tested attribute and variable, we can leave that blank. Scrolling to the bottom, our operator is going to be equals. Our filter type is value. And filter value is the product code exactly as it is in the product object. In this case, it's 10 kilowatt battery. Save. This first rule is important because it's letting the product rule know exactly what product to apply this validation to. Next rule is going to let the product rule know what logic to check for with that product, and in this case is going to be quantity of no more than 5. So same as before, we hit new. Index here again isn't important, so we can leave that blank, but in this case we can just put 2. For tested object, it'll be once again quote line. Tested field in this case is going to be quantity. Tested attribute and variable, we can leave blank, and we can just scroll down to the bottom to operator. And in this case, it's going to be greater than filter type is going to be value, and filter value will be 5. And save. That's it for alert product rule. Now let's take a look at filter, and then we can test to make sure that our rules are applying correctly. Before we can dive into the filter product rule, we need to make sure a few things are configured beforehand. Most importantly, we need to have a bundle configured with at least one feature. So let's go on over to a product record now and see what that looks like. Here, I'm going to be using my 13-inch laptop product as an example. Navigating over to features. Here, in the features, I already have a few pre-configured options as part of a bundle but we'll add a new one to show how this filter product rule works. And select new. What the details here are doesn't really matter for the purpose of our product rule. The only thing that's important is that the option selection method is set to dynamic. 
Once that's set, we can just give it any name. In this case, we'll do hardware. Number. Doesn't matter, this is just the order of your features that are going to be shown in the quote. So here, we can select 50. For max options, I'm going to select one, but you can have any number of options here in case you want to select multiple features. Save. Once this is set, we can continue the pre-configuration, which will require a bit of back-end work. First, we're going to have to navigate over to the product object. Here, we're going to create a new field. In this case, it's going to be a formula field. With text as the return type and the field name, it could be any name, just have to make sure that we remember it for future use. Here, I'm going to name it Prod Family. Next. We're going to want to make sure that the formula is as follows. Text, parentheses, family. What this formula is going to be doing is returning the family text type from the family field onto this new field that we're creating. We can hit next. Next again. And save. Now we're going to want to navigate over to the product option object. And similar to before, here, we're going to create a new field as well. Just like before, this will be a formula field with return type text. The important thing here is to make sure that the field name here is identical to the previous field that we just created. So prod family once more. Next. So this part is a little bit interesting because this text that's in here doesn't necessarily matter as it's going to be overwritten by the previous formula field that we just created on the product object. Or we can just give it a name such as irrelevant text. Next. Next once more and save. That's it for the pre-configuration. Once that's done, we can go ahead and create the corresponding filter product rule. So going back to the product rules, we can go ahead and click new. We'll give it a new name, in this case, only hardware. Type, make sure it's filter. Scope here is going to be a little bit different in that we're going to select product. Evaluation event, always. Active to true. And conditions met to all. Again, we don't need advanced condition because in this case we'll be using conditions met as all. And message again is also not required. Look up query information, blank as, as before. Save. So from here, we can scroll to the bottom under configuration rules and hit new. Make sure that active is set to true. Product is going to be the product that we created the feature for. In this case, it's going to be 13 inch laptop. For product rule name, it should already be pre-selected since we're making the configuration rule directly from the product rule object. From product rule feature, it should be the feature that we just created. So we can look that up. In this case, it's hardware. And here we can just hit save. Once that's done, we can go ahead and create a new action, which will be the last condition that we'll set for this product rule. But before we can do that, we have to make sure that the action is available for selection on the product action object. So once more, going to the back end setup, which I already have here open, we can go to the fields and relationships, the filter field, select new, and here, we're going to add the API name of the formula field that we created on the product object and conversely also on the product option. In this case, we can go back and double check. Make sure we grab that API name, copy and paste, save. Just like the last filter fields from the previous video, 
it is important to make sure that we add the API name exactly as it is, since that's going to let the product action object know exactly what field we are referring to. Once that's been said, we can go back to a product rule configuration. Make sure to refresh the page so that the changes take place. Scroll down to the bottom again, and in the action, select new. Here, the rule should be once more pre-selected. The type in this case, we're going to be default filter. Product here isn't necessary, so we can leave this blank. For filter field, we can add the newly added field that we just created, product family, operator equals, and for the filter value, we want to add hardware. Save. And that's it for the filter product rule. Let's see what that and the alert rule looks like in action. So let's go to a quote. I already have one here open and two edit lines. We're going to add products, 10 kilowatt battery, select. As you can see, we still have the selection product rule active from the previous video, but that won't affect our alert here. So let's go ahead and edit the 10 kilowatt battery to have six quantity. And let's see what happens when we try to save. And there we have it. Our custom error message letting the user know that they should not add more than five batteries to this quote. But unlike validation, we can proceed and save the quote anyway. Or if we want to comply and make changes, we can also hit close. Next, let's see how the filter rule is applying by selecting the 13 inch laptop. So add products. Let's look for 13 inch laptop. Select. And here we can see our bundle configuration from processor, memory, storage, and the new feature that we just added for this demo. Here we have an option that says add options. So if we click that, we can see that the system will automatically filter out anything that's not hardware as per our product rule. And in essence, that's what the product filter rule is. It allows further configuration within a bundle by filtering out certain products by any designated field. In this case, we chose product family. This helps narrow down choices for sales reps in case your company has a large selection of products or it helps restrict the user to only bundling a group of predetermined products. Here, we can just select any and move on. We'll add video cam, save, save once more, making sure that we have our alert, continue. And that's it for how to set up a product rule using alert and filter configurations. Thank you guys for watching and let's keep blazing the trails ahead.